Welcome back to Digits here at WSJ Live. I'm Simon Constable. What video games might you want to consider playing this October? Well, to answer that, we got Jamin Warren. He joins us from Brooklyn, which is apparently rather wet today. Jamin, um, thanks for joining us. You've been scouring all the games. How is, how is it out there in Brooklyn? Uh, it's fine. <laughs> like, it's the same as it is probably for you in the studio. I don't think we have separate weather patterns. Yet. Okay. <laughs> well, let, let, let's start off with the, with the first one here, Edge Extended. What is this game? What does it do? And how do we play it? Absolutely. So Edge Extended is very similar to uh, a game, perhaps a lot of folks who played games might have done in their childhood, a game called Marble Madness, um, which had you controlling a little marble through this universe. And this game, for our iOS, for iPad, iPhone, um, you play as a little tiny cube. I think what really makes the game pop is its art direction. I've described it uh, for cubist space nerds, I guess. It has this like really clean, really clean aesthetic, and it's a perfect use of the touch capabilities of uh, iOS devices. Okay, so this is an iOS device. Play it on your iPhone. Okay, next one, Tokyo Jungle. Sounds fun. <laughs> Yeah, so Tokyo Jungle, um, you know, perhaps unsurprisingly, is a game developed in Japan. You play as one of more than 50 different animals attempting to survive uh, a humanless existence. It's happened after this sort of apocalypse, and you kind of play as two different categories as uh, hunters or gatherers. So you can play as like a Pomeranian, for example. That's one of the main main characters that you start with uh, to try and scavenge for food, or you can play as a lion, an elephant, that sort of thing. It's, I guess, uh, sort of an homage to uh, to <laughs> to George Orwell. And, uh, Animal Farm. Um, it's a really unusual title, but it's kind of got a really uh, interesting take. Did you pick to play as a Pomeranian? Uh, well, you, you start as a Pomeranian. Okay. That's one of the first two creatures that it gives you. So, okay. yeah, that was one of the things that I chose at the very beginning. I don't own one, but I can now play as one. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Okay, next one Super Crate Box. Super Crate Box is another, uh, you're seeing this a lot with uh, with indie games, kind of these homages to older 8 or 16-bit games from the Super Nintendo days. Super Crate Box, um, it's pretty straightforward. You play as a, a, several different characters, and you collect different boxes, and you shoot different characters. Um, what I liked about it was it's very, you know, very manic sensibility. It's got a, a sort of a wry sense of humor, and uh, it was developed by a set of uh, Dutch developers, so it's kind of cool to see some independent game development coming out of that region of the world. It, it looks very uh, circuit. In 1992, I might Yeah, you're, you're sort of the super kind of the super title is something that you sort of saw a lot with uh, you know Super Nintendo titles. It was a super pretty Mario. common adjective that was used. So they're definitely trying to play with that visual language, trying to sort of uh, pay you know sort of pay homage to you know previous games that were in that style. Okay, now Super Hexagon. <laughs> Another so super game. Super, so yep. this one, <laughs> so this one is sort of like. Um, yeah, it's probably one of the most dizzying games I've ever played. I was playing it on a flight to San Francisco. You play as this little triangle and the entire screen rotates and you kind of like jump back and forth from these different little regions and there's like this blaring techno beat and um, you know, I'd highly recommend this one. It's sort of like, I don't know, I wouldn't be surprised if they're giving this to, you know, folks in Guantanamo <laughs> uh, for anyone sort of to experience like sensory deprivation. It's like, uh, it's super, it just the visuals are really overloaded. It's really manic. Um, I'm a big fan of it. I I think you know it kind of points to the, a lot of the experimentation you're seeing these days on um, particular mobile platforms. Um, a typical round only lasts one to five seconds, so J it's really I'm, the kind of I'm, thing that you can just play on the subway over and over and over again. One to five seconds. If that was on a big screen, I, I, that's the first time I've seen that footage. Um, it makes me dizzy already. <laughs> Did you throw <laughs> yeah, up while gets, you were playing uh, it gets this? Yeah, it easier. You know, game developers refer to, um, you know, sort of these things. When you play games like that, it puts you, like, in the zone or in a flow state. So that's what that game does, like, almost immediately. As soon as you're staring at it, you are, in like, in deep inside the game. Or maybe it's too intense and maybe you don't want to play anymore. But I found it to be really captivating. So of, of those four games that we just went through, which was your favorite? Which did you like most? That's a good question. Um, I was a big fan of Super Hexagon, if only mm. because I was playing it with a lot of friends. You sort of compete to see who can last the longest. And you end up competing over these very small differences in time. Oh, I got 10 seconds. You got 12 seconds. So, you know, I was using it on my iPad and using Game Center so I could play and see what my friend's scores are. Um, so that's my favorite. I, you know, I sort of like the sort of pick up and play sort of aspect of it. But that's something that's been eating up a lot of time for me in the past month. Well, now we know what you've been doing. Thank you very much. Always a pleasure. Jamin Warren of Killscreen joining us from Brooklyn there.